Good morning, sisters and brothers in Christ in Southern Hills Church. Will you pray with me? Our gracious and holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts this day be acceptable in thy sight. For you, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. For many weeks now, we've been dealing with fear. The dictionary defines fear this way. Fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain, or be a threat to us. Fear has a way of infecting our human condition, masticizing itself into what I call the dynamic of fear. And this is how I define the dynamic of fear. That fear begats anger. Anger easily intensifies into rage. Rage leads to violence, and violence oftentimes leads to death. We saw the fear dynamic at work during Holy Week. The temple authorities feared Jesus because he threatened their power and the wealth that came from their power. The Romans feared Jesus because he threatened that which was most important to them, was keeping order and peace in Jerusalem during the Passover week. And the crowd, the crowd that on Palm Sunday yelled Hosanna and cheered Jesus coming, feared the loss of what they believed Jesus was going to bring, the kingdom of God, driving out the Romans and making Israel great again. And their fear of losing all that led to their loud shouts in anger and rage of crucify him. The cross, I think, is just, a much, just as much a symbol of our human fear as it is of God's grace and mercy and God's love expressed in and through Jesus Christ's sacrifice. Fear, anger, rage, violence, and death. The fear dynamic that we are capable of expressing in our humanness. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy upon us. This week, I saw an image of this fear dynamic at work on the national news and on the local news. It, were, it was faces filled with rage that were pressed against the windows of our state capitol. It was fear that was based in a, of them losing their civil liberties that they believed that were being threatened by our state's policy of stay at home. And that fear was expressing itself as rage. It was a scary sight seeing those faces filled with rage pressed against the windows. And I pray and hope that that rage will not masticize into violence and lead to people dying. Of course, there's one only antidote to fear. The disease of fear and the symptoms of suffering and death that that disease produces and that is the peace of Christ. The peace that goes beyond all human understanding. The peace of Christ that comes from God in and through Jesus. The peace that takes away the burden and the guilt of our sin from us forever. The peace that restores our relationship with God, Almighty God. The peace that removes the fear of death the peace that promises us resurrection 
and the hope and promise of eternal life in the age to come. The peace of being called and equipped with God's Spirit, Jesus' Spirit, to be his disciples in the here and the now, and be part of God's saving salvation plan to save our sin-sick, sorrow-worn, violence-filled world. Jesus appeared to his fearful first disciples that first evening in Jerusalem in the upper room where they were huddled behind closed doors, fearing arrest, persecution, and death. That night, Jesus came amongst them, and he said to them, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And then everything changed. Everything changed forever. Then Jesus said to them, As the Father has sent me into the world, now I send you. And he filled them with the Holy Spirit. Go forth, he said, and forgive people's sins. And that's exactly what they did. That's exactly what they did. They did so with fearlessness and boldness. Acts chapter 2 that you read a portion of this morning shows exactly what they did. What courage they must have had to, to leave that upper room, fearful of death, and go out into the streets of Jerusalem and tell the folks exactly what they had done and what God is, has done and is doing and will do for them. Offer them eternal life in Christ's love as well. For the first disciples, Easter turn their fears of death into peace, into the peace and fearlessness of being Christ's disciples, spirit-empowered, spirit-filled, and began a process of transforming the world. The question that we ask ourselves this morning is this. Is Easter having any effect upon us in the midst of our fear, our current fear in which we are living today, the fear of sickness and the fear of death? I pray with all my heart, with all of my heart, that Easter this year will deepen our faith and grant us a more powerful presence of Jesus' peace in our lives and in our church. Norman Vincent Peale once said that the cure for fear is faith. And of course, he meant the peace that comes from that faith. And the great preacher Henry Emerson Fostick said these words. He said, fear imprisons. Faith and the peace that comes from faith liberates. He said, fear paralyzes. But then he said, faith and the peace that comes from faith empowers. Fear disheartens. But faith and the peace that comes from that faith encourages. Fear sickens. And faith and the peace that comes from that faith makes people well. We heard a song in our service this morning, In Christ Alone. And there was a verse in that song 
that went like this. And may we take this into our hearts and into our lives, this truth and this promise of peace. The verse says, no guilt of life, nor fear of death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I stand may we stand this Easter season in his hand in his power in his peace there's an old uh, sermon technique or way of preaching sermons that always ended in a poem. And I'd like to end this uh, comment or this message with a, with a part of a poem by John Greenleaf Whittier. It goes like this. Drop thy still dews of quietness till all our strivings cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. May the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you this day, this season, in this time, and forever. Amen.